from the Gaspé Peninsula. You might notice my rather beautiful surroundings. We are here this morning at the Reeford Gardens. With over 3,000 species and so many different gardens, there's a lot to see, so we're gonna walk around and explore. These flowers behind me are one of the highlights of these gardens. These are blue poppies and they're extremely rare. They come from the Himalayas and they're very, very challenging to grow from seed. These ones, this patch here, these are hybrids of ones from the Reeford Gardens and also other botanical gardens. But in other spaces here, you can find the ones that are the direct descendants, we can say, of the ones originally planted by Elsie. They're very rare, so being able to see them here in this number is very special. This walkway here is called the Long Walk, or in French, the Allée Royale. And on both sides, you can see massive lilacs. And I personally love lilacs. They're one of my favorite scents. And I've always kind of dreamed of having just fields and fields of lilacs with a house in the middle. That sounds like a dream to me. So when I came in and the breeze picked up and I smelled the lilacs, it's just heavenly. <laughs> There are over 3,000 species of different plants in these gardens, and they're called Reeford Gardens after Elsie Reeford. She was the woman who started this garden in 1926, and she gardened here up until 1958, with plenty of help, by the way, because this is a very large place, as you can imagine. She's an interesting character. She actually inherited this land from her uncle. Her uncle happened to be Lord Mount Stephen. He, you might know, was the founder of Canadian Pacific Railway, obviously a very wealthy character himself. She was his favorite niece, so when he passed, this land became hers. And up until that point, up until her early 50s, her favorite activities were what certainly would have been considered masculine activities at that time, things like fishing. She loved to fish. When she was 54, she had surgery on her appendix and her doctor gave her the advice that she should stop fishing and start gardening. So that's what actually started this gardening adventure for her. And she's really what you would consider a kind of avant-garde horticulturalist. We're here in the historical gardens. There's also a kitchen garden, which we're going to visit a little bit later, which I'm really looking forward to. There's also contemporary gardens where they have different exhibitions from gardeners from around the world. And there's a villa where there's different exhibitions and a restaurant. The villa was the original fishing lodge that was built in 1887 by Lord Mount Stephen. And when Elsie took over, it became her villa. During Elsie's lifetime, she employed a lot of local people here in the gardens, and that legacy really continues today. And in the summertime, there are about 60 full-time gardeners managing the grounds. inside the villa now and when Elsie's uncle was the owner this was the fishing lodge when she took over this was where she stayed when she was at the gardens and we're about to head up the stairs and we heard a rumor that when you're going up this very staircase you can sometimes feel a presence kind of following behind you and they say that that is Elsie following you up the stairs and curiously this phenomenon only seems to happen during the summertime months because she was only here during the summer so we're gonna go upstairs and see if it's just us going up the staircase. Well, I'm definitely being followed, but so far it's just you guys following me. <laughs> <laughs> We're upstairs in the villa now, and on this floor there's an exhibition on Elsie and her life. And in fact, the whole villa is kind of a museum now with different exhibitions going on. And there's also a restaurant downstairs where you can eat. Not a bad place to spend the summers, Elsie. <laughs> Not bad at all. 
there's a really old photo album here that caught my eye and it's interesting. It says that in 1888, Robert Wilson Reford, who is Elsie Reford's husband, bought one of the first Kodak cameras that was ever offered for sale. And he became the first Canadian amateur wildlife photographer and one of the most prolific as well. So definitely an interesting couple with very varied interests. We're in the uh, Jardin Potager, or the vegetable garden, kitchen yes. garden now. And Patricia is going to show me edible flowers and all the things that we can eat. So she's already picked me this, but I don't know the name actually. That one, we call him Guilon. It's Guilon. kind of, um, well, I would like you to taste it. Okay. So if you tell me what, what it tastes, okay, uh, that'll give you a cue which family of plant okay. is it. All right. <laughs> all right, just the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, does it remind you of something? It does, I'm trying to think what. Wow. It definitely does. Everything that does, the little kid doesn't want to eat in their plate. Broccoli. Oh, broccoli. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I actually love broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next, um, some are flowers, but some are leaves. Okay. And this one, the leaves are edible. You can just take a little one. Okay. Oh, that's strong. But reminds you something that you taste sometimes. Start with a C. Celery? Cucumber. Oh, cucumber. You, you think it tastes mm. like cucumber? A little bit, yeah. Well, less taste, mild maybe. Yeah, tastes are like for each one also could be different. So, yeah. you know, me, I can taste probably more cucumber, but you could taste you have to really chew the leaf to to make the flavor come out. Mm. So you must know this one. Yes, I feel like I've had this in a salad once or twice maybe. Okay, that plant, you can eat everything of it. Like leaves, uh, flowers, uh, flower seeds. Okay. It almost looks like a hibiscus. Yeah. Like in a little a, hibiscus. A li little hibiscus. Yeah. yeah. Should I just eat the whole thing? You can, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just eat Go the whole thing. Go for it, why not? Breakfast. Ooh, I really like that. <laughs> and it's a little bit spicy. Yeah, it's very it's some, spicy. Some kick. The little seed pods will be used uh, to replace a cap. Those oh, little capers. Capers, yeah. Uh -huh. capers. But the, the, the seeds mm -hmm. will do the same job. This is allium. Mm -hmm. Okay, we all we have a all, whole bunch of all kind of variety of allium and you can also eat the flower. Allium, garlic, mm -hmm. we normally use the bulb, but in this garden we use the flower. So this flower should taste a bit like garlic. Garlic. Tastes like garlic? Oh yeah. It really does taste like garlic. Mmm. Mmm. I love garlic. The plant is not very nice now because we had very cold days. It's not very tasty, but it's uh, something that gives you a nice feeling because okay. it's uh, very watery. Watery? I feel like you can almost see the moisture on the surface. It's kind of yeah. glistening. How many kinds of um, edible plants would you say are in this garden? In this garden, we have over a hundred. Over a hundred edible plants? Yes. Of wow. Course. Yes. <laughs> Oh, you can taste the moisture right away. Yeah. It's almost like it's wet in your mouth. <laughs> it's cooling, refreshing tasting yeah. when it's hot out. Mm. <laughs> so one thing I always say to everybody is you have to really know the plants. We see sometimes some people arriving and trying to eat everything. I just kind of freak out because you never know. Some plant could be very poisonous and we don't want that. So <laughs> <laughs> just you know, just make sure when you, you grab something, you know what it is and you know what you eat. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. And uh, we also have uh, plants, they will do uh, lemonade or tisane mm, yeah. with them. I so love that in summer. If you have this, it's um, agastache. It's very licorice. Oh, okay. Oh, you can, it smells nice. It smells like it. Mm, it smells like licorice. Oh, that's like knock you down flavor. Holy cow. 
one little leaf. Yep. That's it. Powerful. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Concentrated flavor. <laughs> we'll we'll have this one for the last one. Okay. Whoa. Tiny. Yeah. I'm suspicious about how small it is. <laughs> oh well, you'll be surprised. <laughs> Tiny. Minuscule. I bet it packs a punch. Whoa! Yes, it does. <laughs> Holy! Small but mighty. It's smaller than a piece of gum. Yeah. And way more flavorful. Yes. What what flavor it reminds you? I can't put my. I don't know. I can't say. If I say orange. Yes, citrus. Citrus. Yeah. Orange. Yeah, it's, I can taste that. Yeah. It's the taste. Uh, Very refreshing tasting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you were saying there's over a hundred varieties of edible flowers in this garden, which blows my mind. And we've only tried a handful, but I really feel like I appreciate flowers and plants more because I didn't realize that there were so many that you could eat. So thank you You're welcome. for showing me around. I feel like anytime I get a salad now that doesn't have a flower, I'll be just a little disappointed. <laughs> well, I don't expect that now. <laughs> so maybe you'll start your own little garden to have at least a few ones. You don't need a hundred, but a few ones. I think I have to. Yeah, just a couple maybe. Okay, <laughs> bye-bye. <laughs> One for you, one for you, one for me, one for me. <laughs> and we're gonna share these, right? Yeah. Hey. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Okay, my chair. <laughs> my chair just went about that deep in the grass. Oh. <laughs> like I'm sitting like this. <laughs> It's wet ground. Oh no. That's okay. It's one of the pleasures of sitting outside. <laughs> I just was a little surprised by it, that's all. <laughs> we stopped into the garden cafe, the Cafe Jardin, because we wanted a little break and all of the food that they make there comes from the reefer garden. So we got a cabbage and carrot salad and a potato salad and all of the ingredients are grown here. And then we're really thirsty and it's a little bit hot out. So we both got two cold drinks. Uh, I love the cups too, they're quite cheerful. This is a geranium infused lemonade. Of course, the geraniums come from the garden. We each got one of those and then also an iced coffee uh, with oat milk. So these look really delicious. And I think we're gonna share both salads so we can both try them, right? Yeah. Okay, coffee time. Okay, I'm gonna, I gotta try the geranium lemonade. Oh my god, that's good. That's delicious. I don't think I've ever tasted something with geranium in it before. I certainly didn't eat it in the kitchen garden earlier because <laughs> I would remember that. I love red geraniums especially. That's delicious. Mmm. It's not too sweet, but it's ice cold and it's just got the, that kind of kiss of geranium, kiss of the flower. Wow, Delicious. that's good. Really good. I don't know about you, but my first thought when I thought about Elsie Reeford, who started this incredible garden, if I could meet her, I would definitely want to ask what her favorite flower was. And this is actually it, it's the irises. You might think that she'd be most proud of the blue poppies that come from the Himalayas and are incredibly challenging to grow and nurture. They're very rare, but actually she wasn't most proud of those. It was these irises, which you can find all over the garden. These were what she prized most of all. We've 
walked over from the historical gardens that Elsie Reeford started over to what's known as the Contemporary Gardens. And for the last 23 years, this has been the site of the International Garden Festival, which was started right here. This is its 23rd year. Every year there's a different theme, and this year the theme is adaptation. And people come from all over the world to participate. Designers, architects, landscape architects, and this festival that was started here is internationally known. Sadly, we have to move on from the Reefer Gardens. This is the kind of place that I could just spend the whole day. I'm so happy that we got to try some of those edible flowers. I feel like I learned a lot and just seeing all the different ways that you can use different parts of the plant and also to substitute certain flavors like garlic or cucumber or citrus. And also just learning about Elsie Reeford as a woman over at the villa at the exhibition there. She seemed like such a dynamo and I wonder what she would think about these gardens still being here all of these years later for us to enjoy. I hope it would make her happy. The historical gardens are such a beautiful place to walk around. Seeing the blue poppies for me was a real treat because that's the first time I've ever seen them and I know how rare they are. And the contemporary gardens, knowing that it brings in all these creative people from around the world and that it started here, that was really interesting as well. So to have the historical gardens balanced with the contemporary and then the museum and the history of the people and the place, including the fact that Elsie's husband had one of the first Kodak cameras and you can see all of his family photographs. <laughs> For me, that was really unexpected and really, really cool. And I now have a new favorite beverage, which if you don't know by now, is geranium infused lemonade. <laughs> so overall, this has just been a fantastic day. So I really hope that you guys have enjoyed it as well. If you liked the video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for lots more travel adventures. And we'll see you in our next video. Bye.